Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to a new video. My name is Prince Mason. Today, we're going to be looking at how I retouched this image of this beautiful bride who is my friend's wife and their wedding was last week. So I had the opportunity to shoot the bridal portraits and I want to show you guys how I edited it. This was shot with a Canon 5D Mark. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this was shot with a Canon 6D Mark II and um, it was shot with the Sigma 85 mm 1.4 art lens. I don't own it. I don't own either of those things the camera or the lens but yeah my friend does so <laughs> i borrowed it for this particular shoot as you guys can see here 125th of a second that's the shutter speed and we shot at 85 mm like i said it's an 85 1.4 i shot at 1.4 and also iso 200 now this portrait is extremely beautiful as you guys can see now there are a few things i would like to correct now um the first thing i like to do in capture one is just get the portrait to where I want it to be in terms of contrast and all that so now I'm just going to pull in my whites like this and my levels here in my capture one folder by the way this is capture one if you do not have capture one you should definitely try and get it this is to me the best raw processing software out there right now as of this moment this is my favorite I wouldn't say it's the best it's my favorite the best for me so yeah, now I'm going to drag my blacks in too. Now, if you know a little bit about levels and histograms, um, when it comes to RGB images, you know your whites are on your right and your blacks are on your left. So as you guys can see, pulling my blacks, to add a little contrast and I'll pull in my whites. Now, you can also come up here and capture one and toggle this to see where it's overexposed and underexposed. So basically overexposed, not underexposed. So it shows um, some red blotches or what would i call it to show where it is overexposed so now i'm just going to like pull my highlights up in my dynamic range and i think this is where i want it to be now as you guys can see the image is really warm and i want it to be like this because when i take it to photoshop i'm going to cool it down with a particular filter and it's going to look great so yeah now the next thing i want to do in capture one is match the color of her face to her neck now obviously sometimes you do makeup and it would not match perfectly um it just it it's not always perfect um especially when the light at the end of the day is hitting your subject's face more than the body it tends to show that it's a little bit off so we're going to fix this right now now what i'm going to do is come to my local adjustments and i'll create a new layer and i'm going to name this skin Now I'm going to come to color editor, come to skin tones, or before I do that, I'm just going to go to my local adjustments here, pick a brush. Now B for brush, E to erase. So I'm just going to pick a brush and now I'm going to just paint over my subject skin where I want to correct the areas I want to correct. Now, as you guys can see, it's not, I'm not like being perfect here. Just going over this place is now she's wearing white so it's not going to affect all these places i think <laughs> but most of the time it doesn't so now as you can see this is not just this is not a perfect mask but at least i've covered everywhere that i want to fix and um for wedding pictures at the end of the day you really do not want to spend too much time um editing because you probably have like a ton of images but i guess there's just some specific images that you want to like um spend some little time on to to just make them pop a little more so now i'm going to come down to color editor and i'll go to skin tones then when i come to skin tones you see this color picker right here i'm going to click that then i'll pick a part of her skin on her face that i want the rest of the body to look like so let's just say here right here and now i'm going to increase my hue and i'm going to increase my saturation until it's at the point where i want it to be like right here you can also increase the lightness, just make the area a little bit lighter. But so I think this is fine. Yes, this looks good. I think this matches her face right now. So in Capture One, the only way to see your before and after that I know of is to create a new variant. So this is our before and this is our after in Capture One. Before, after, as you guys can see, the neck was just a little bit off color. So before after and this is a beautiful thing about capture one the fact that you can just fix these things easily in capture one because i it used to be a struggle for me in photoshop so the next thing i'm going to do is take this image and edit with photoshop 
these are the settings that I use in Photoshop. Now, different people have their different opinions for different things that work for them, but you know, this works for me and yeah. So yeah, I'm not, <laughs> um, at the end of the day, it's not how you get there is you gain there. So now that we're in Photoshop, I'm just going to like pick my frequency separation actions that I use. And yes, I use frequency separation. Some people use global dodging and burning and I'm sorry, uh, micro dodging and burning global. I think everybody does global dodging and burning, but I use frequency separation to work on the skin tones and there's not a lot of work to be done here, but we're just going to get to it and see how we can do as little as possible right here. So now I'm just going to click simple frequency separation because I'm not trying to do too much here. Um, probably set my radius to 10. I think the higher your radius, the more skin texture your image is going to retain and the lower your radius, the less skin texture the image is going to retain. That's what I've figured out over time. So now that I've done this, just going to get my trusted mixer brush tool right here. And I'm just going to brush over her face and blend in the transitions between the highlights and the shadows, the midtones, just blend all that in. With my mixer brush tool, I'll be working on my low layer. Now, if you want to see videos on frequency separation, I'll definitely put a link in the description below or put a card somewhere up here so you guys can see it. Now, for some reason, my screen recording stuff does some weird things if I I don't know, change a number or something, or if I type a number. So I hope it's back now. So yeah, like I said, I'm just going to blend the skin tones, um, the difference between the highlights and the shadows, um, and not do too much work on this. As you guys can see, she has um, some dark spots under her eyes. So I'm just going to work on that and reduce those dark spots. Now we're not going to spend too much time on this image because we are on YouTube and I don't want to bore you guys with um, long editing videos. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to spend as little time as possible. But if you're learning and you're just starting, I advise that you take your time when it comes to editing pictures like this because that's going to help you just become better. Um, also, you guys can see when the makeup is good, you really do not have to do much as, as a retoucher or as a photographer, not even a retoucher. Um, you really do not have to do much and this makeup is really good and she has really nice skin. Well, we're not trying to make a bride look fake. We're just trying to touch this up because cameras nowadays are extremely high resolution and they will show the smallest blemish in the world so yeah now i'm going to pick my clone stamp tool and work on my high frequency layer i'm using a new microphone today oh sorry make sure when you are working with your clone stamp tool on your high frequency layer make sure you are in current sample current layer so now i'm just going to use alternate on pc option on mac to sample a part of our skin close to where I want to remove the blemish and just take this out. I think I was saying I'm using a new mic, so I hope the audio is not terrible because if it is, I'm still going to put this video out like this because if you really want to put out a video, I've just been so busy doing something else apart from photography. Actually, I've been extremely busy doing music. How many of you guys want to hear my songs? Aha, I can see somebody doing their face the same way. You're still going to listen to it though. doesn't matter. So yeah, so back to photography. So now I'm just removing the blemishes on her face. Um, she has, I don't know what these are, but they're like smile lines. So I'm just going to take this out. Take all this out. Make sure her skin is as flawless as it will look with the naked eye and not with a 20 something megapixel camera. So yeah, like I said, we're not going to spend too much time doing this. I know you guys do not just want to hear me yapping. Yeah. So 
let's see let's see i think we're good here just take out a little more of this and like i said if you are new to this kindly take your time because that's going to help you learn better you really do not want to rush retouching trust me i know so yeah just take out some of this hair right here and get my mix a brush tool again and just fix this part on the low layer so my mixer brush tool i'm back to low layer now if you're using your mixer brush tool kindly follow the settings that are up here right here make sure this is not toggled this one is toggled wet mix um wet 30 low 30 your mix 100 really doesn't matter because you're not mixing colors together then my flow is 29 this is why i use if you're starting you might want to use lower values you might want to use lower values maybe you've not gotten the hang of it so let's see our before and after so this is our before this is our after as you guys can see we've just smoothened out some parts of um her face i'm just going to work on this part here because i don't like how it looks just bring it so let's see before after okay great so now that we're here the next thing that i want to do is dodge and burn so i have uh, my dodge and burn curves adjustment layer if you haven't seen uh i use curves adjustment layer for my dodge and burn <laughs> if you haven't seen my video on dodge and burn i'm going to put a card up here and also put it put it in the description below so you guys can check it out and hopefully i'll do an updated dodge and burn video soon I, I don't think there's anything i'm doing differently right now but if for some reason i start doing something differently i'll definitely put it up so now i'm just gonna click on this action right here i created this action myself and you guys can create an action for yourself um it is easy and extremely simple to do so yeah um like i said check out my dodge and burn video if you want to see um an in-depth look at dodge and burn so yeah so now i'm just going to pick a brush tool set my flow to about three opacity is 100 and um i'm going to toggle off the frequency separation so i can see exactly where i'm going to dodge and i'm just going to dodge her face Dodge the top of her head, dodge this part of her cheeks, and under her chin, nose. Uh, just create some little highlights on her hair, nothing serious. As you guys can see, I'm not being extremely meticulous about this. Just doing my thing. So yeah this is this then i'm going to go to burn and just do a little bit global dodging and burning nothing too serious so you guys can see i'm not zooming in to work on this image because i feel like this is how people are going to see this image this is how people are going to see this image just like this ah uh, i'm just going to have to go back and get my mixer brush and just smoothing out the textures and the hands a little bit so yes so it matches what the face looks like. So just like that. Great. So this is where our image is right now. So I'm going to go back to my dodge tool, pick my normal brush, set my flow to 10 and I'll zoom in and just brighten our eyes a little bit. Okay looks good um another thing i'm not going to take out any of these trees it's going to take forever it's a wedding picture it's not like uh it's not for a beauty magazine trust me she already looks good enough so yeah so this is what this looks like right now as you guys can see just dodging the under um the under parts of her eyes like under her eyes yeah and brightening her eyes up just brings a lot more life into the image so definitely um pay attention to that now, the next thing I want to do is um, probably get like my levels, um, adjustment layer, um, hold alternate or option down so I can see where it's been overexposed. Uh, it's not bad at this point. So somewhere around here is fine. As long as her skin is not overexposed, then I'm just going to like pull in my blacks a little bit. So yeah. And this is what this looks like. It looks great, but I still feel like <clears throat> um it looks a little bit um warm looks too warm for me personally but um, we're going to fix that but before we do that let's fix her eyes 
So to make her eyes white, I'm going to get my photo filter and change it to the cooling filter. And this is still the same idea I'll use for the skin to cool it down. As you guys can see, it looks a lot better now, but we'll get to that point. Um, then I'm also going to get a black and white filter and I'll clip it to the photo filter. Just hold alternate or option and hover um, in between both layers. So basically me clipping the black and white filter to the photo filter means that the black and white filter will only work on the photo filter and not affect any other thing underneath that. So I'm just going to reduce the opacity of the black and white filter to uh, somewhere around there. Oh my God, not the photo filter, sorry. I reduce the opacity of the black and white filter. And also the photo filter, I'm now going to invert this. Now, once I invert the photo filter, you can see it's back to how it was before. Oh, I created two photo filters. I'm just going to delete one for now. <laughs> my bad. Um, now I'm just going to pick my brush tool, make sure my opacity and flow at like, uh, at a hundred percent. And I'm now going to paint white into the inverted mask now do not forget white reveals and black hides when it comes to um, working with masks on on your layers so this is a black mask now that means it's hidden everything that is here so this right here and this down here they are both hidden and to reveal this i'm just going to paint white on the mask so you guys can see your eyes are just a little whiter than they were before now to complete this look, I'm now going to pick my photo filter again, which is probably one of like my best adjustment layers right now. Go back to my cooling filter, um, the cooling filter 82. And now I'm just going to reduce the opacity to about 70. And ta-da, that's how I got this beautiful bride to look even more beautiful. So um, let's put all this in a group. And let's see our before and our after. Before, after. So you guys can see, bring this to the middle here so you guys can see it before and after. So yeah, that's it about today's tutorial. It is quick, simple, easy, and an effective way to actually get your pictures to look great. Now, um, also put at the back of your mind that if you want your pictures to look great, it has to look great in camera first before you bring it into post. If you do not shoot right, then you'll not be able to make it right in post. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, give this video a huge thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Yeah. Um, hopefully, I'll be bringing you guys a lot more retouching videos over the next few weeks. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you guys in the next one. My name is Prince Mason. Have a fantastic week. Peace.